Someone did very bad things to you. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Obviously you were involved with the, the original remake as well. Did you want to completely experiment with it this time or did you want to kind of stay quite loyal to the original? No, it stays loyal, absolutely. I mean, for me, it's it's just becoming a franchise. It's only part two and the first one was so true to the remake that it's not time for reinventing yet. Um, maybe whoever does part three or four or whatever, they can do that. I felt that this... You know, and, and all the producers agree that this had to, you know, still stay along the lines of the story of I Spit on Your Graves. Can you just tell us about how you got involved with the film? Um, yeah, sure. I auditioned for the film um, and, yeah, then met the producer, Lisa Hansen, and the director, Stephen, and, yeah, then I got offered the role, so. Brilliant. And what attracted you? What made you see it and think that's something you wanted to get your teeth into? Oh, lots and lots of different things. Um, I I knew it was going to be controversial, and that, that interests me. Um, I like things that are controversial. Um, also, the fact that it's, it was going to be challenging. I love to be challenged, and I, I knew like it was going to be an interesting experience, and that I was, yeah, going to going to learn a lot. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about how you got involved with the film? Yeah, um, I, start, I was shooting a film in London, Jack Ryan with Kenneth Branagh, and I had a birthday. Day. And I went to Sofia, Bulgaria. I'm originally from Bulgaria. And I went there to celebrate for three days because I had a break. I went there, I heard about this film, and I sent my pictures to the casting director. And then I got a call from Steven and the casting director that they want to see me. And I went there to the studios. I had a hangover because I drank until 5 a.m. I was there at 9 a.m., completely still drunk. I met Steven. And he just invited me for a film. He said, you're the writer for the role. And I think it's good that I drank before the meeting. I mean, pretty much, you know. And he just invited me. I didn't have to audition, which was which doesn't really happen very often. Because for Jack Ryan, I had like two or three auditions, for example, you know. But And we clicked when we met. He gave me the script. I saw the first film, and I was like, that's going to be a good experience. Let's, let's do it. Yeah, obviously, you know, the, the, it's, it's a rape revenge film. And, and how do you sort of prepare yourself mentally? to do things that are quite obviously quite horrific really I found that the less I thought about it the better the, just to go there and be organic in that moment and see what happens and uh, yeah because if you start I've, I felt like I could have gone in it two ways like I could have started to worry about what might have happened or what was going to happen and then it might have affected the performance that I gave so I just tried to put it to one side and you know separate the character from me what was it that attracted you to this film? Had you seen the original before? I see it. I saw it after I met Stephen. But I knew Stephen from before. I've seen a couple of his films with Dennis Hopper and others. And it was a great opportunity to work with this American director coming from LA doing the film in Bulgaria. He gave me the script. I'm playing Nick. He's one of three brothers who are taking advantage of Gemma's character, who's the lead girl. And it was very challenging. And, and, you know, it's fun. It's fun, it's fun to be challenged. And, and uh, I knew it was going to be rock and roll. It's going to be fast shoot. And what, what attracted you, it to you, like the first one included, like what attracted you to it? Well, to do the remake, obviously, for me, I saw the original when I was very young and it had a pretty big effect on me. Um, and it's a cult classic, so there was that interest. For me, it was one of those things that I, one of those films that I looked at and said, it could actually get remade. It's a brilliant cult classic, but it could get remade. So that's why I wanted to be involved in the remake. I like movies that push buttons and force people to ask questions of themselves in their comfort zone and things like that. And um, and with the sequel, it really was that I just... I had put so much emotionally and physically into doing the remake, and it was such a big part of my life for, you know, a good year and a half. I wasn't quite ready to turn the sequel over to somebody else yet. Um, so I felt like I still had some work to do. So did you find you actually were allowed to be quite creative and artistic yourself or was it or was it quite a heavy direction? No, no, Stephen, obviously like there were things that we blocked out but it was never a case of oh can you just tilt your head so that you're facing the light for this bit and do this. He very much let, let us um, produce the scene organically and, and obviously change little bits here and there but um, he was great really. Brilliant. So, so do you think that, that this is kind of 
sort of, sort of thing you want to do again or do you have kind of other ideas for your career afterwards because obviously horror is a very certain type of character it's a very certain type of um, role you have to play I don't know if you can really say that about this particular character I mean I don't really see this film as a horror film as such a generic horror film anyways I think it's dark and gruesome but it's also almost shot like a docudrama it's about her story um, it's, it's not um, yeah as I said it's a generic horror film so. How do you sort of mentally prepare? Like, how do you... You know, I, I knew what I had to do. I met Gemma on the first shooting day. We clicked at the moment. Yeah, she's very small, very petite, very cute, but you know, like small little girl. You don't want to do these things to her. But I knew what I'm getting into. I knew what I had to do. And I don't care if it was going to be a 95-year-old woman or a 5-year-old girl. you got to do it like Jeremy Irons in Lolita. I mean, in Lolita, he's going under his skirt. You know what I mean? It's one of those things. I also saw a couple of films. I saw Gaspar Noir's Irreversible a couple of times with the rape scene with Monica Bellucci. And I just watch a lot of films constantly, listen to music. And this helped me. Seeing Gemma, she was cool with it. She told me, go all the way. Which helped, you know, partnership, communication with her. Yeah, so um, do you think that you're going to be making more? films sort of in the English language you're from Bulgaria originally but do you think that's kind of where you want to head? I lived in America for five years and I, I've been in London for two years so I don't do a lot of films in Bulgaria I do most of my films in London or in the States or somewhere in Europe I, I'm going yeah I was in Bulgaria for a year I'm going back there again so I like to travel everywhere and work regardless of where Japan, Australia, China, India I don't care horror as a genre particularly franchises seem to work why, why do you think that is uh, they, don't, they don't work with everything I, yeah, I don't know if I have a definitive answer about that but it is true about it is true about horror films there seems to be something about the characters and the circumstances that you can keep going and sometimes when they're done successfully um, keep the audience blown away every time by them um, I think a lot of it does have to do with just the actual circumstance and the characters that come with that. Brilliant, thank you. And and uh, in terms of casting, how did you pick? How did you pick the actors? Because obviously you had to have a lot of faith in them. And... Well, yeah, no, and, and and they have to have a lot of faith in me. So I, I look for that trust level too. If I'm, you know, when I met with Gemma, I knew immediately what she was capable of, and she immediately knew she could trust me. Other people that I met with, I could see were questioning whether they could trust me, and it would never work. So. Um, uh, I mean, I she was one of my top picks right off the bat, and when it came down to decision time, I just, you know, I, I put up the fight for her because I knew she was perfect for it, and, and she was. I mean, I'm, I'm still, to this day, completely blown away with her performance. You think that hurts? You just wait!